Um, welcome to Wednesday. I have I have a really fun plan for you guys today. Um, we're we're gonna clean a dirty little machine that desperately needs some TLC. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what you can do at home if you have a machine that's similar. Okay, I'm all by my lonesome now. Um, we're gonna talk about what to do if your sewing machine sounds like a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> normally, if you're here in store. Um, and I'm looking at your machine from a service and technician standpoint, and it sounds sounds like a tractor, sounds really clunky and awful. Um, usually I say they sound like tractors, um, but today we're we're dealing with machines that sound like dinosaurs and doing a little bit of TLC on one specific type of machine today. Um, as I as I sneak machines out of our service department, um, we will touch on other types as well. And right now, uh, this is a Bernina sewing machine. Um, the hook system in this machine is called a CB hook. So uh, this is probably one of the most common hook systems in sewing machines. It's been around a long, long time. It makes a beautiful stitch. Um, but if you don't know how to maintain it, it tends to be rather noisy when you sew. Um, this one is not super duper noisy, um, but it doesn't sound great either. And it's definitely not super clean. So we're going to get in there. I'll do a little bit of sewing. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of cleaning. And I'll show you how to maintain this little hook system. To keep it running nice and smooth. So your machine doesn't go extinct on you. So you might not be able to hear this um, live on camera. Uh, but there's a very distinct plunk, plunk, plunk kind of noise happening. Um, First thing from a technical standpoint that I notice when I sew on this machine is that the needle is dull. So if your needle is making a planking or a plucking um, or pounding, thumping sound, um, you probably need a new needle. So that's the first thing. Uh, tension on it is not stellar. It's okay, but it's not stellar. And that could be partly due to, um, partly due to the needle being dull. It can cause tension problems. But it could also just be because it's not super clean inside. So on this machine, uh, when you go to clean and maintain your machine, I'd recommend taking your needle off. We'll give it a new needle when we're all done. Take your presser foot off. So on Bernina, there's a little latch on the back. I have to watch our Bernina videos on YouTube. If you want to see how that's done. We'll take your presser foot or stitch plate off. Found some dust bunnies. We'll open the bobbin door. Tyler asked me what all that smudge was on the camera when I started, and I unfortunately had to tell him that that was not smudge on my phone screen. Uh, on my camera, that's lint inside the machine. Um, so your next step to get into this machine is your latch. I will take the bobbin case out, actually. Take the bobbin case out. And then we'll release the hook race. So this is a little latch on the left-hand side of the opening. And the hook race cover will fall out. And I'd also recommend unthreading the top of the machine while you're at it, so that's not in your way. So we're going to start turning the hand wheel and playing around with this as we go. And then on this machine, you can take out what's called... Uh, we're going to take out what's called the hook. So this is a CB hook. Uh, so counterbalance. It's an oscillating hook. Uh, I'm just going to leave it in there for a second. Super dirty. Tip the machine back ever so slightly so it doesn't fall out on me. Um, as the hand wheel goes around in a circle, this hook is going to oscillate all the way from one side to the other. So it moves in that whole round circle pathway but it doesn't go in circles. It just oscillates back and forth. So when we pull that hook out, normally when you open this and your needle's up, it's gonna be over on that right hand side. And when we remove this, a couple things we wanna watch for on the hook. So the uh, this is the business part of your hook. This is what will actually grab your thread to make your stitch. Uh, if you've had lots of broken needles, there's a chance that you have a rough spot on here. So if you're shredding thread, breaking thread, 
uh, having issues. It could be you have a little burr on the end there. Uh, we can fix that here in store. It's a pretty quick, easy little polish job. Um, but I would def definitely recommend letting an expert do it so we don't polish away uh, something we shouldn't and make it too short because I don't stitch either. And then my favorite cleaning tool is a Q-tip. And you'll want to just clean all the lint off the hook that you can because uh, sewing machines make lint and sewing machines don't like lint. It's really, really not a great, great situation, but that's how it is. So you want to clean all the lint off the back as well as the front. And there's a bit of a groove in along most CB hooks. Uh, make sure you get in there. If it's really packed in there and you haven't cleaned in a while, you might have to scrub pretty hard to get that off. So once your hook is clean, we'll go in and clean the machine. So using your same favorite uh, cleaning tool, um, you can use a lint brush. I find lots of lint brushes get uh, full of lint and then they don't pick up the really fine stuff. And all that fine lint over time will, will cause issues. So starting from your feed dogs, work your way down. And any lint you can see, you can pull out of the machine. Make sure you get over your door. And then one thing to note in here, I'm going to see if I can zoom in. So when you're zoomed right in, in this hook, there is a little bit of black smudge right in the deeper groove in there. That's some of the lint you'll want to take out of the machine. A uh, little bit of soft, fluffy lint. Um, not not so bad for a few minutes, but if you leave this in there long term, uh, lint can actually build up enough that it will start to damage the metal and you'll wear out your hook race as well as your hook. And I can safely say that you don't really want to pay for a hook race replacement. And if you've got a really old machine, parts might not be available. Um, this is a newer Bernina. So the hook race is still available for this one. Um, but if you've got a really old mechanical one, it might not be. So just turning the hand wheel will get, will get the hook driver out of your way so you can clean the other side of the race. So that little chunky of lint there, that's what we're after. We want to get rid of all of those all the way around the whole race. This is why I like Q-tips, because they, they'll get right in there and pick that lint up for you. If you need to at this point, tip the machine back a little bit. I'm just going to do that because I can't see through the camera. Now that that is looking a whole lot cleaner and shinier and we don't have those uh, lint, lint bits hiding in, in the middle there, I'm much happier about that. Um, we're almost ready to put our hook back in. But well, while we're out, uh, we should give it a little drop of oil. So we're just going to switch cameras here. So, um, like I said, the hook is the business part of your machine. As you can see inside where it sits inside the machine, it's rubbing metal on metal. Uh, that's what we need to keep lubricated. So if your machine is sounding like a tractor, or a dinosaur, it probably wants a drop of oil and the lint cleaned out. Um, depending on when you got your machine and depending on your user manual, there was a small section of Bernina's with the CB hook that said they didn't need to be oiled. That is not true. They definitely need to be oiled. And, and usually getting that lint out of there and giving them a drop of oil makes them sound like they're almost brand new. It's great. Um, so when you're holding uh, the hook, the very outer boundary here is what's rubbing metal on metal, and that's where we want the drop of oil. So normally I do it right below the hook tip because I know that'll go through the whole hook race and get everywhere it needs to be. This is uh, sewing machine oil. If you don't have any, uh, we carry oil. There is more than one type of sewing machine oil, so do check with your user manual what type you should be getting. Uh, but just a little drop of oil on the tip of that hook. So to put your hook in, um, this is your hook driver. Uh, so without the hook in the machine, it will turn back and forth. 
it's going to be half your half your circle. When you go to put your hook back in on a CV hook, it's going to go opposite your hook driver. Just like that. And then close the latch. When we clean lint out of our bobbin case, use a Q-tip once again. Uh, sometimes lint builds up underneath the spring on the bobbin case. Just watch for that because it can lead to tension issues as well. Then on the bobbin, um, there was a tail sticking out through the hole here. It's not necessary on most Berninas um, to stick the tail through the hole while you're winding a bobbin because there is a the threads will wrap and, and secure themselves to the bobbin. Uh, when you set up your bobbin winder properly. So you can drop the bobbin in the bobbin case, thread up and under the tension spring in the bobbin should turn clockwise on a CB hook bobbin as it, you pull the bobbin thread. And then we're ready to put our bobbin case back in, latch it in place, trim the thread off over there, and then uh, most Bernina stitch plates, they're happiest if you put the left side in first, like so, and press down. We can put our foot back on. And we put a new needle in at this point. And then we can re-thread the top. And give it a little sew again. Um, you did, I did move the hand wheel a whole bunch, so a needle up, needle down on the machine, or turn the hand wheel so that it is all the way back up will help you get your um, thread in the threader. And while you're at it, you could clean all the lint off the door too. So it looks so much prettier. So much better. Much happier machine. Sounds way better from what I can hear here in store. Uh, that would be the basics of doing your maintenance on a CB hook machine. So I hope that helps anybody who has a CB hook machine. Um, CB hook machines um, in the Bernina range are something like an old 830, uh, old 730. Um, some of the newer ones or mid-range, not quite as old, would be something like a 153 or a 135. Um, the 215s, the 240s, the 325s, 335s, 350s. 350s are one of the most sold machines. Uh, those would all be CB hook machines, um, right up into the 530 and 550. Um, if you have a 570 that's older, you might have this style of hook. If you have a 570 that's older, it's a B9 hook because Bernina kept the same number for two completely different machines. So those are some of the machines that'll be relevant. Uh, if you have a 1008, uh, it would also be a CB hook machine. So that basic maintenance doesn't matter whether it's computerized or mechanical. Very useful to do on any machine that has that type of hook race um, and that type of hook system. There's brothers out there like that. There's Burnett's. Um, like I said, very, very common hook system. They all look a little bit different with their latches and how you get that hook race cover off, but the principles are the same as to what you need to do to maintain them well. you wait for a, a proper service. Um, so doing that little bit of maintenance every hour or two or three bobbin changes of sewing will keep your machine running much, much smoother between maintenance. So think of it like uh, refilling the oil in your car. Um, you need to go in for a full oil change sometimes and that would be a full service with us here in the store. Um, but in between, you need to do the maintenance yourself to keep it running smooth in between. So you need to put gas in the tank and you need to put oil in the right place to keep it running nice and smooth. So that is what I have for you guys today. Um, be safe, be kind, be calm, and I hope you guys have a fantastic Wednesday evening. Bye for now.